In this presentation we're going to take a look at the complex exponential and the complex exponential is given by this expression up here. Uh, it's e um, to the power of j omega t where j is the root of minus one. Most non-electrical engineers will use i instead of j. Omega represents frequency in radians per second and t is my time variable. And the complex exponential can be broken down to two parts, um, a real part and an imaginary part. And I, you can get this using Euler's formula. So Euler's formula shows that e to the j omega t is equal to cos of omega t plus j sine omega t. Um, now it's convenient for us to do this anyway um, because cos omega t is a waveform or a shape that we're quite familiar with as is j sine omega t. Uh, so down here I have a plot of cos omega t and we can see it's got this shape um, and this is my time axis here. Okay. Uh, now this plot over to the right is my j sine omega t value and this is my time axis here and we can see that because it's multiplied by j it's going to oscillate between j and minus j okay um so this 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 part here the j sine omega t is the imaginary part of my uh, complex exponential and the cos omega t is my real part of my complex exponential e to the j omega t. Now in the middle uh, I have a plot, um, uh, it's, well it's, it's an argand plot and I haven't labelled the axis but this is the real axis of my argand diagram going horizontally and this vertical axis is my imaginary axis of my argand diagram and you can see that they line up with um, the um, real values, so cos omega t are all real values, and they are, this point here is uh, a value of 1 on the horizontal axis. This value here is minus 1, and it lines up with the minimum amplitude of the cosine waveform. And you can see that this point here, which is a value, is my imaginary axis, a value of j, uh, the value of j, it lines up with my uh, maximum amplitude of my uh, sine waveform. And similarly, the minimum, this point here on the imaginary axis is minus j, this minimum point, is corresponds to the minimum of my uh, sine wave um, component. Okay. Um, so I have two red dots, and the two red dots will show the evolution of the sinusoids um, over time and this green dot will, you'll see that it moves uh, but it's going to keep track of the sum of the two red dots so at this position this green dot is equal to 1 plus 0j now click the start button you'll see it move let's stop up here now at this point the green dot is equal to 0 plus j on my argon to plot this will start up again and you'll see that it tracks the evolution of the two sinusoids. We'll stop here. So at this point here it's roughly equal to 0 0.7 minus 0 0.7j. And you'll see that it now continues. So the evolution of a complex exponential over time is a circular motion on the argon diagram. And for e to the j omega t the evolution is an is an anti-clockwise direction. Um, <coughs> I'll show you now what's known as a negative complex exponential before showing you a three-dimensional view. Because so far we're only seeing a two-dimensional view, but I, I'd like to show you the uh, negative complex exponential first. So a negative complex exponential is given by this expression, um, and it can be rewritten in this form down here, e to the minus j omega t is equal to cos omega t minus j sine omega t. So it's very similar to the positive frequency complex exponential, except that this sign here has changed from being a positive into being a negative. And now the impact on that is the imaginary part of the complex exponential now has this shape here. So it's different from the previous plot. It's a uh, 180 degrees out of phase. Um, but we'll see what happens now when the green dot, um, which is again the summation of the real part 
and the complexer to the addition of these two parts, we'll see how those those summa the summation of those on the argon plot how it changes over time. And in this case, you can see that the green dot is now moving in a clockwise direction, whereas in the previous diagram, it or the previous example, the green dot moved in uh, an anti-clockwise direction. So positive going uh, complex exponentials rotate in uh, an anti-clockwise direction, whereas in uh, negative going um, complex exponentials rotate in uh, a clockwise direction. And that's very important to note um, for, for other presentations. Um, what I'd like to show you now is um, how this evolves over time. So we try to visualize this in a three-dimensional space. At the moment we're just visualizing the uh, green dot as it changes in, uh, in the argot plane or complex plane. But now let's just look at it in a, a three-dimensional sort of complex space. I'll just rotate this around. What I'm going to show you is a time axis. So now I'm introducing a time axis as well. So this black line here is my time axis. Um, and you can see the shape. Um, it's a spring or helix-like shape is the, the shape of the um, the, the, the shape that's created by a complex exponential as it evolves over a three-dimensional uh, complex space. Uh, if I click the start button again, you can see how it does evolve. This is, might be the best view here. So I'll just click start, it'll start again at the very start. And you can see how it rotates. It's following this helix or spring-like shape. Now with the positive going complex exponential, it'll just be very similar shape, only rotate in the up direction. And I can bring that around my front view again. You can see it's following a, the circular shape of the argon plane as well. 